as you can see, when I was recording this video and stress testing my Raspberry Pi, I actually got the thermometer to show up in the upper right corner there. Yeah, that's right. The Raspberry Pi 4 does run hot. In this video, we're going to test four settings. Number one, we have the base test here. No heat sink, no fan. Then we're going to take it to the next level, and we're going to add one of those little cheap heat sinks that you get with a lot of these Raspberry Pi 4 kits. And then we're going to step it up even more to the dual fan kit. You can see it doesn't fit perfectly on the new Raspberry Pi 4, but I did use some thermal paste as well, and then the dual heat sink. And this is a lot more practical, and I, you know, let's see how this does. And then lastly, I recently did a liquid-cooled Raspberry Pi 4. And so in this video, I'm going to compare all four. I'm going to stress test all four. And and I'm going to get the peak temperatures for all four. So as you can see here, Raspberry Pi 3, a thermal drawing here, not too much heat. A lot of it focused on the processor. When we got the Raspberry Pi B+, Plus, wow, look at that. The processor really started to show some heat, but nowhere else on the board really was all there centered. And then now with the Raspberry Pi four a lot more heat so in this video like i said we're going to take those uh, four different configurations and put them to the test starting with number one we have the base model here um, i know i can get this all automated to set up but i just did it the old-fashioned way you were gonna, i'm taking peak temperatures i'm taking multiple temperatures um, so with the base clock um, just running it, running the cores at max. I run these tests about three or four times in a row to try to get a peak number. And the peak number for the uh, baseline is 75 degrees, which is hotter than some of the other videos I've done and I've seen other people do as well from the Raspberry Pi B+. Now what happens when we add a small heat sink, you'll notice it's not as high, it's at 59 degrees, but it's gonna heat up as I run these tests. They're going back up to 66 and then it drops again. So as you can see, um, a peak, of 66 degrees, 67 there, 66, 67 on a small heat sink, still super hot. But you'll see here, now I, now it's gonna heat up as I run these tests, but here I have the dual fan kit. I'll put a link in the description to this kit, and it worked really well on the Raspberry Pi B plus, 3B+. Plus. So let's see how it performs here on the Raspberry Pi 4. And as you can see now, already I'm in my second or third stress test, and it still hasn't broken 40 degrees Celsius, which is really, really good. There we go, 41. It broke 41 there. And again, I'm just running these tests a lot to try to max this thing out, get it to uh, overheat, get it to draw some um, some heat. So there you go, 40 degrees. And that that's a very practical cooler. It's cheap, it's inexpensive, it's easy to install. I did use heat sink paste, but besides that, that's it. And then here's my video in my for my liquid pie four and it is cooler it's definitely cooler um something i didn't mention is that the oil does get hot as you run it more and more it is not practical at all but it does work look at that 38 peak but really really quick drops to 36 so it is more powerful than that heat sink but at what cost you might say and that's really a good argument on that it's not necessarily practical but hey, if you could do it, why not? And if you're into those type of things, you're going to want to stand by for my next video, which is even more crazy. So here you go. Here are the top temperatures. Now, again, I've run these tests four or five times. So when the pie cools off, I have to get the temps back up again. But I made sure I got those temps back up um, as high as I can. Now, Explaining Computers did this test in the past, but he did a big heat sink, which is super unpractical as well. But the big heat sink does actually work really well, better than the heat sink I showed you in this video. But again, it's not as practical as the heat sink fan combo I showed you in this video, and it's only a couple degrees less. And again, this is Raspberry Pi 3 B plus numbers. But if anything, I think what's really good to look at is those peak numbers all the way on the bottom of the chart and then the differences between the different setups. Um, so anytime you can get a large heat sink to dissipate the heat and then the fan really helps just add on blowing on it, getting it to reduce its temperature even quicker, that's a really good combination. Now, if you can liquid cool it and the liquid is is cooling, whether it's a you know an actual radiator with a um, some sort of uh, face plate on there or with the mineral oil. But again, mineral oil is pretty crazy. So there you have it. Those are the results 
Um, some of these really high-end heat sink fan combos are great. But as you can see, just a little small heat sink will make a little bit of a difference. Maybe make your pie last a little longer. But if you have a little extra cash, you know, going a little bigger could definitely um, have some benefits, especially if you're gaming for hours and hours and hours or running this thing for hours and hours and hours. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.